Hello, hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the kickoff. Now, football in Pakistan is more than a game now. We've got fans following the English Premier League, the Champions League. We have got, you know, the La Liga, the El Clasico is a classic in Pakistan as well. More fans anywhere else than in Asia, in Pakistan, who are following football. I'm your host, Ahmed Nawaz, and we're going to be talking about football and a lot more than football. We're going to be talking about another sport that is coming up now in Pakistan very quickly. That's, of course, boxing and, of course, mixed martial arts as well. And it is actually making a place in the community of nations and in Pakistan as a great sport. Of course, it's a contact sport, but it's going to be one honorable show because I'm truly honored. I've got one of the two greatest legends of two different sports here in Pakistan, here in the studios of BTV Sports. One of them, a.k.a. the killer, a.k.a. the, you know, he's, he's been called the killer. He's been called the ghost as well. You know, I, I'm trying to figure out which one was it, but I was truly intrigued. I said it to him off air as well that I really missed your mustache, man. That was something I wanted to see. I saw it growing up as well. And he, he's got more than 380 goals in club football. Started off from Chester City, moved on to Liverpool, Juventus, Liverpool again. One of the greatest footballers I have known growing up as well. He's right here in Pakistan. None other than Mr. Ian Rush. Ian, hello. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. How's, how's it going in Pakistan up till now? Yeah, very good. I think, uh, you know, it's my first time in Pakistan, so it's going to be very interesting, but uh, so far, so good. Right. And, uh, you know, and besides him, we've balanced the legends out, right? We didn't want one legend taking over the other, so we've got a good contest. We've got another guy who started off as a boxer, became a promoter. He's been a successful promoter because his record of being a promoter says a lot because every guy he stood with has actually got some results as well. He was known as the spirit. Now he's known as the knowledge. He's probably one of the most followed guys on podcasts as well for Sky Sports. I've been following him as well. He's none other than Mr. Spencer. Mr. Spencer, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to PTV Sports. Alaikum salam alaikum. How are you, bro? I'm really good and even even better for being sat beside a real <laughs> legend. You can't call me a legend. You got you got the ghost. This guy, right. they call, uh, the ghost. Yeah. Right. You need to sue Power, the TV show, because they're using they're using your moniker. Yeah. We need to get some money in. What's yeah. the matter with you? Yeah. I'm going to speak to Avalon Sports right now. We got to go get some money. But what a connection! You know, a connection made up in the heavens, probably the ghost, the spirit, once it was called. <laughs> so it's something of a mad making. But Ian, uh, before we start off, I know everybody knows your football stats and they've been following you. I really want to start with the Ian Rush Foundation because that is something I really feel that the people need to know about. Yeah, I think the Ian Rush Foundation simply giving back to grassroots. You know, uh, I had a fantastic career myself, uh, but I know how difficult it can be for, for boys and girls you know, to, to, to better themselves today. So what, I'm, what the Ian Rush Foundation there is to try and give them facilities, equipment and everything to give them a, a better, better way of getting round to play football. Uh, but for me, the most important thing is they're doing it and they've got a smile on their face. You know, if they've got a ball there, they're kicking the ball around there and they've got a smile on your face, that means you're doing something right. Right, uh, and you know, you you were a boxer, then you became a promoter as well. Being a promoter was much more than, you know, than business as well. It was getting all of these talented guys up to the limelight and giving them a strengthy back as well just to get onto the stage. What was the thought behind that? The thought behind it? Well, when we started Hard Knocks, we started Hard Knocks. Um, boxing in 2008 and it just went on from there it's like I've it's natural progression what happens is this when people are involved in in professional boxing when they retire the fighters if you haven't made it to the top level when you retire you you end up being a doorman or you end up doing manual labor I'm not knocking anybody doing manual labor or, or, or doing a door doing door work I couldn't see myself doing that mm. um, and you got to stick to your talents. And what? And my talents is I'm uh, I'm a communicator. I'm a I'm a comfort speaker. So you got work. You got to work what you're good at. So I got work what I'm good at. So and, and that's what I did. And uh, we had very very good reign of success. And I'm, I count my blessings for for what it did. And then it moved on to TV work. And it moved on to to motivational speaking. It's moved on. And it keeps on. It keeps on growing. Uh, what was it? Howard Howard Wilson, the former. Prime Minister of Great Britain in 1976 said, he who rejects change is the architect of decay for the only human institution that rejects progress is the cemetery. So if you reject progress, you might as well die. Yeah. So, so, so we look what Ian's doing. Ian is, uh, is global ambassador for Liverpool. Why? Because he's accepted progress and change and he's moving forward with his progression. So you have to progress... Uh, in, in you have to have a progressive mindset 
So I like to be around people like... He should be certain, you know, Rush. He, yeah. Right, I like to be around... <laughs> and he needs to be knighted by now, yeah? Yeah. Of, course, of course he needs to be yeah. knighted. Right. Uh, you need to be around people that their good energies will rub off on you. And then what happens is this, you rub off on together and you elevate. Right, uh, I'm going to ask you this, uh, that three different, uh, you know, things are coming together. It's about a team. It's not just the Ian Rush Foundation or MTK, uh, MTK Global as well. Right. There's another one who are behind that, who were involved in getting you into Pakistan as well. Talk us through that. Um, Oxford Community Hub. Yeah. Um, Wasim and Ricky are really they're, they're, they're totally different polar opposites of each other. But they're, they're, the thing that is the synergy between them, they've both got good hearts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's never your actions, but it's your intentions. Yeah. Their intentions are good. So because their intentions are good, that for formulates the, the, the basis and the foundation. So they had this vision uh, to promote Pakistan, hence why we're here. Um, and they, they went mm -hmm. full throttle to go and do this. They invested their own money as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had very, very big governmental appointments and, and, and meetings. Like earlier today, we met, we, uh, we met quite a few ministers. We're meeting the sports minister <coughs> tomorrow. It's great because mm -hmm. we're trying to bring home the, the narrative of collaboration right. within yeah. Pakistan to help the younger generation uh, with MTK Global Foundation and with Ian Rush Foundation and build from there because there is so much untapped talent in this country. It's ridiculous. So if it's there, let's untap it. Right, Ian, uh, growing up, right, I know you've been an Everton fan. And <laughs> the, you know what dreams, how dreams come true because yeah. you've done that. Uh, Chester City is where your career changed. Liverpool is where you went to, then you went to. So you've had a dream. You've actually been able, you're one of the lucky ones who's been able to achieve that dream. And that's something very important for all of these young kids out there who have a dream and really want to get there. Yeah, I think uh, my dreams is to score a goal in the, in the cup final. Um, no, my dream came true. And, you know, I think you have to have a dream, you know, and uh, believe in that dream. But then you've got to work hard at your dream. And if you can do that, it'll come true. It might not be football. It might be something else. And that's why we're saying the, these foundations is not just there for football. It's for the life skills for me to, uh, like people can come into a, a soccer academy, not knowing people, going out, being friends with people. So later on in life, they'll need them skills as well. And, and that's what it's all about. People are learning how to talk to people in different ways and everything. But, uh, you know, so it's not just about football. It's about life skills as well. But just because of football, let's just talk about football right now. I know, understand, I understand when you were playing, football was something else. Since then, up till now, 2019, uh, it's evolved uh, into something more. More nations playing football, more the clubs, more <coughs> the intensity, more the youth getting involved. So it's actually something that has been bringing nations closer and eliminating these boundaries. Yeah, that's true. I think, I think football brings everyone together. Yeah. We're all worn it together and, that, and that's what it's all about. Uh, for me, it's, uh, you know, since the uh, Premier League started in 92, you know, football's elevated to, and it's getting even bigger and more, more countries are wanting to play. So what we have to do is, uh, you know, I, I'm the Elite Performance Director of the Welsh FA Trust, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, I've been there for nine or ten years and I've seen progress from Wales. So if you have the right curriculum in place, you will, you will, you will get better. You no, know, England won the under 17s, under 19s, under 21 World Cup. So there's something right in there. So you've got to take that and take them to other places, and you start all over again. And that's because Pakistan, it's a, a greater cricket, greater hockey, you know, that greater squash and everything. Well, they have been world champions and all that. So there is talent here. If you've got an eye for the ball, you know, whether it's cricket or football, they, there's so much talent here, so you know, it, things have to get better. Right, and it's about the right people as well, because what he highlighted, like you mentioned as well, there's a lot of talent, but all these guys need is a platform, and that's where people like you come in, that's where promoters come in, because in Pakistan, not, the talent's still there, but we still need to explore a lot about promoters as well, because we need some here. Yeah, most definitely, and that's why um, uh, Sandra Vaughan, uh, who is the head, of uh, MTK Global, he said, Spence, while you're there, make sure that you plant the flag, knowing that we will facilitate, because we've got quite a few um, Pakistani boxers already on the books, mm -hmm. but we will facilitate that uh, to maybe put a show on here, to do something, to, to make more eyeballs be on Pakistan in a positive light. And, 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 and that's it. So and I'm really, really grateful to them for the through ball. I'm really grateful to be in your country and the hospitality that I've received. Um, it's great and, and may it long continue. 
How's the sun treating you? I heard you're here for the sun as well. Yeah, that's it. I need a suntan. You know what I mean? I, you mean? I, I, think, I, I think I was getting a bit. I want to get as dark as Ian. That's the whole point. If I can get as dark, then I've made it, right? Seriously, my credit ratings will go up. But no, um, it's, it is. It's, like I said, this is actually a beautiful place. And the, the nicest thing is this. Especially, like, you've got to think about it. Well, from where Ian Rush has come from, his humble beginnings of where he's come from, uh, to, to, the, to the heights of where he where he went in, his, where his career culminated to. Now you, you've flown some thousands and thousands of miles, with an eight hour flight, uh, and you're in a foreign country where not everyone straight away is gonna know you, right? Yeah. Especially now he hasn't got his trademark. Oh now, yeah. Right? <laughs> Seriously, if you grew that, you know, that's in a rush, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. And, he, and, and he hasn't, and he hasn't, so he's here, mm -hmm. but then as soon as like people see that, oh, it's in a rush, they bow humbly. And it's really cool for me yeah. to see that uh, with, with, a, with a person like this because he's actually a I've been I've met him quite a few times we've, we've been out quite a few times and he's just a, he's just the nicest person and the right person to help push the narrative of sport especially football in this country right we might have gotten you some specs you would have been called postman Pat here wouldn't you yeah yeah but uh, then again the point is talents there everything is there there is a missing link because if we talk about football right now in Pakistan the talent's there, the resources are slowly getting there, but something is still missing just to reach up to the mark where other countries are as well. Well, when you look at it, I think um, we can go there and we can put a training session on. Okay, it's the most important thing is when you're not there. Yeah. You no, know, for me, I think it's important that every boy, every girl, if they've got a football themselves, it's no worth where one football, 20 people running around because you're not going to learn nothing. Mm -hmm. For me, every boy, every girl has some football. They, you teach them a skill, and the most important thing is that they go away and learn that skill. So when they come back again, they're doing that automatically. But the most important thing, everyone, is the coaches. You have to coach the coaches. Now, we were taught that the, the football pitch was a classroom, and if you didn't have the right teacher, you'd learn, but you learn the wrong way. So I think the most important thing is we need to, you need to teach the coaches how to coach. You got you put something into place there, yeah. Whether they're seven years old, or nine years old, eleven years old, there's always we have a, the English Foundation has something in place there. But you have to coach the coaches to do that, and that that that's where we come in and do things. But all the hard work we done was after the coaches. You get a good coach, and they'll do, they'll go and learn and everything. They'll go back and they'll teach the, they'll teach the kids how to do it properly. Right, it's about role models. You need heroes and role models in this era just for the limelight of all of these youngsters to watch as well. I know boxing wasn't there in <coughs> Pakistan, but where Amir King Khan came in, all things changed. People started, you know, boxing. They wanted a box. They started getting punch bags and everything. So it's important to have role models, just a star who can just take it away. Yeah, of, co of course, it is. It's, it's <coughs> incredibly, it's, it's incredibly important that you have role models, but the right role models. Yeah. You're saying like yeah. you just want to be the. Uh, uh, what I've learned is this: it's not just being about a champion in the ring. It's about being a champion when you're out. It's about being a champion when you're at home. It's about being a champion when you're socializing with people on the street, or, or, or your fan base. That's the real key. It's not about championing. The boxing ring is about championing life. As Ian was saying earlier, it's like it doesn't matter. Like to help with kids with um, interactual skills, social skills. The, these are the most important things, and it all starts from 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 manners and respect. So it's like when Ian's saying like, "Oh well, it's to teach the, the the to teach the the coaches how to coach." It's just like in anything in boxing right now. You've got certain boxing trainers who are not qualified boxing trainers. I swear down, they couldn't even teach a dead pigeon to lay down. <laughs> One of them is terrible, yeah. right? So it's about getting that correct infrastructure, and then you can build the role model. But it's not just being a role model for yeah. for thirty six minutes of fighting. It's about being a role model for twenty three hours, fifty six minutes, and four seconds of every single day that you're here on this planet. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. But what about you? Ian Rush has been a role model for many of them. I guess Liverpool's has been one of the greatest clubs for, uh, we've been followed, right? In Pakistan, their recent victory, now they're going yeah. up against Barcelona <laughs> in the Champions League as well. Something to watch out for. But what about you? How have you felt being a role model for so many people out there? Well, I think um, I was brought up to uh, no, just try your best, uh, respect everyone uh, and try your best. And, and that's all I've done. You know, I don't, I don't see myself as a role model. Well, I most probably do now, but when I was playing, I didn't. Mm. Uh, I just wanted to get on there and, and, and do the best I can when I was playing. So when you finish playing, if you've got to go coach, you have to go all the way back down again. And my dad always taught me, uh, my dad always taught me, so, so you know, all these people you meet on the way up, be nice to them because you'll meet them on the way down. You know, and yeah. uh, I've, I've always so when you go into coaching, 
you can't start off at the top. You have to start off at the bottom and work your way up and respect how, how these do. And, and that's, the way, that's the way I look at it. I, I've had my time. I loved it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, you know, I'd give anything to have it back again, but I've had my time. So my job now is to pass experience on to uh, other people and hopefully that they can learn as well. And that takes a big heart as well because we understand a lot of people out there who are truly legends. Passing it on forward is the key now, but they're somewhat restricted to passing on that talent. Yeah. But I like some of your quotes. I know why you call the knowledge now, because I heard one, I, I was reading something where it said that somebody came up to you and said, I wanted to be as good as you. But you told them that, no, you don't want yeah, to be, you want to be better than that. 100%. So, so that means that being a promoter is more than just promoting that person. It's about making them realize about that they're better life. than everything. 100%. Yeah. Hey, listen, it's like, we are all going to get old and we are all going to die one day, right? But the thing about it is this, it's not what you leave to somebody, it's what you leave inside of them. Mm -hmm. So if you leave positive, energy cannot be destroyed, neither created, this is science, scientific fact. So therefore, if you're leaving good energy with somebody, positive energy with somebody, they're gonna wanna have it, and it's like a bucket of love, they're, I'm gonna pass it on to you, then you're yeah. gonna pass it on to you, then it's gonna, and it's gonna continue, and if you can do that and pass that on, that is, that's, that's key. I get, like, I'm very, very fortunate to be in the position that I am right now, that my passion has become my paycheck. I love this sport of boxing, I've loved it, <coughs> but it's, it's spurned off to so many different things for me. So, because it's spurned off for so many things for me, I want to champion those aspects as well. And if I can champion those aspects as well, knowing that the shortcomings is this, is everything is like a ricochet. Like you took a, a pebble and you threw it into, into the <coughs> river and it ricocheted out then that's got, to be, that's got to be your life essence. That it ricochets and it, like, it touches and it goes on for years and years and years. And that is the true measure of how you're going to be counted as a, as a human being. One thing which is very important right now, I see a lot of people involved in club football or franchise sports, if you want to call it. But when it comes to international duties, something there is missing. Either the flair isn't there, the excitement isn't there anymore. I know you've been playing club football, but then you've also had the opportunity to represent the Welsh side as well internationally, and you've made your mark there. So it's very important to realise that not just your club football, but you representing your country at a bigger stage is even more important. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's a dream. No, you, you dream of being a footballer, but uh, to represent your country at any level, and is, is uh, something uh, no very no something that you aim for as well. And for me, um, I hardly missed a game for Wales. And you, you know, when you, you go to Wales, you don't get paid to play there. You know, you just go there because you want to represent your country. And uh, for me, that that's what it was all about. Uh, I'm lucky I played for Liverpool, but uh, for your country is um, something you'd be very, very proud of. And I say, being the elite performance director of the Welsh Bay Trust, now we have the kids of 15 years old to represent the country at that level. Maybe only about maybe three or four percent might go on to make it to the top. But what you look at to represent your country at any level is something that you should be very, very proud of. And I'm very, very proud that I represented my country at the highest level. Right. A lot of things now are business oriented. You're a promoter yourself. I un understand you'll have the knowledge and everything about that as well. But this is the bigger side of life, or you want to call it the better side of life, when foundations like yours, when Ian's and then the Oxford one as well, you guys come closer, you guys come together, and you're doing it for a greater cause. It's not business at the end of the day, but it's something even more. Well, it, well it's, it's, it's not business, but yeah. the thing about it is this, it's business in running it though. There's an old saying that there's tricks in trade and mechanics in business. Yeah. Then I'm very fortunate that like uh, Ricky and Wasim, um, the, the guys at Avalon Sport, they're the mechanics, because they that's what they do, they, right? Well, I'm, I know what I'm good at. Uh, what I'm good at, or I, or I try to be good at, is spreading that positive light. And I, I really do enjoy meeting people. I'm just actually an honor to be sat on your show. Yeah. I'm in Pakistan, what? I'm on Pakistan on TV? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's, right, that's big to me. That's, that's, that's really, really big to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna go back to Sky Sports next week. But what I'm trying to say <laughs> to you, that is very, very big to me. And it's like, and I'm, I'm really, really um, grateful that I have business people behind me because it's not just me. You, people think like, oh, you're the knowledge and I've done it all by myself. That's a lie. There's been so many different people that have helped me and pushed me to go forward. Like my missus, my kids, so many people, my mum, my dad. There's been loads of people, family, friends, members, 
there's been loads of people to push me forward, so I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for that. You gotta say, yeah. Mrs., because you gotta go back home as well, don't you? Yeah, I don't want to sleep on the couch. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, well, we don't want to be there. No, none of us do. But uh, tell me one thing now: uh, boxing was something else in the eras of the great Muhammad Ali, then Tyson, and everybody else when you were there as well. It's now evolving into another sport called mixed martial arts. That's yes. something from UFC now to here is a huge evolution of sports, and even that is being followed, especially. From yeah. young kids and even Pakistan now. Yeah, I know there's quite a few Pakistan. We've got female there, really. female athletes yeah. there as well. You know, you listen. What this is what is remember like what sport does? Sport transcends any sport transcends transcends race, sexual preference, sexual gender, uh, uh, um, religion. Sport transcends that. So why don't we just bring it all in one place? So when you're seeing people going and doing mixed martial arts right now, because it's a hip thing right now, because. Human beings have short attention spans. Nobody doesn't really want to see a 12 round masterpiece of boxing from Floyd yeah. Mayweather. If you're a purist like myself, then you want to go and see that. Really, you, we, we, are, we are microwaves in our thinking now. We are here and now, like, bing, we want it right now. So something like mixed martial arts will, will grow, and it will grow because it's, it's captivating a, a younger audience, it's got a young demographic, and it's, it's really happening. I'm, I'm really happy as well that MTK Global yeah. do um, have MTK Global mixed martial arts, any young kid that wants, just go on the website, MTK Global, and, 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 and keep on pushing forward. Because I'm telling you that big things are going to happen in that sporting arena. Right, and even if it was for football as well, we've seen it. From football, it went to futsal. We had a shorter version of football being played. Yeah. What was the difference? But because you were a player, then a coach as well. So you understand the dynamics of real football, but then they came down to futsal. Yeah, futsal is obviously the ball's a lot heavier and everything, and uh, not, it's not like 11 a side and everything, but it's, uh, it's, that's like uh, Spence was saying then, it's shorter, and that's what people want and all that. Mm. They want to see more goals and everything, and, uh, but the techniques are still exactly the same. You know, and I think especially in uh, South America, you know, that, that's very, very popular, all that. And it's, again, it's coming over to, to UK now, and it's, um, it's getting big. It won't be as big as like, uh, no, the, the football and that, but the, the futsal is, is improving all the time in UK. But originally, you say that, that come from South America. Yeah, but England, if we talk about England, Wales, or if we talk about, uh, you know, English clubs in particular, Liverpool, Manchester United, they've had a great era. They've got the Beckhams, they've got the Rushes, yeah. they've got everybody else. Owen was there. And a lot of people were playing. Now there's been a huge gap towards glory from since those ages as well. Where do you see this missing? Because we've got clubs from, uh, you know, from La Liga dominating. We've got the Spanish side, the French sides. All of them have been dominating. But somewhere down the line, English football has been missing that. Well, I think the England national team, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think you have, what you have to realise is the Premier League is the most demanding league in the world. We know who's going to win the league in Spain, Barcelona, Real Madrid. Mm. You know, you know, Juventus are going to win the Italian league, and all that. But, but I think uh, this is the the English Premier League is the only league in the world where the bottom club can beat the top. Yeah. It always happens, and uh, when you're looking in the Champions League, you know, uh, Barcelona, Real Madrid, they will rest players before they play the Champions League. In England, they can, cannot afford to do that. They rest the players; they get beat. Yeah. So, they, so it's been. But one, one thing I will say is. Um, it's coming round now because uh, you know we could have a like Liverpool Tottenham final. You know, we're looking at that, yeah. so they are slowly coming round because all the best players in the world, apart from Messi, Ronaldo, I would most probably say is in the English Premier League. So it's getting there. But you're asking England to win the World Cup. How can you ask England to win the World Cup when they played seven or eight months, really demanding there, and after that <coughs> take them back and say, right, go and win us the World Cup? Yeah. It's absolutely virtually impossible because mm. they're so tired. Do they do light training? Do they do heavy training and all that? It's difficult for the manager to sort out. But I look at England now with the national team and they have got some very, very good youngsters. And if, uh, if they do it right, which I think they've got a good manager in, in Southgate and all that, mm. I, think, uh, no, I think they're looking, they're looking to do very, very well. And even for Liverpool as well, because you've been there, you're a legend for Liverpool yeah. as well. <coughs> and uh, you know, Liverpool say you'll never walk alone. That's very <coughs> important. But the club ha has a you know, history, mm. an illustrious history. And that's what it's meant to the fans as well. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I played the last time they win the league. No, 29 years ago, I was actually playing the last time. So I think everyone, it's like the only grail. No, no, uh, I, if you asked me uh, 29 years ago, it would be no, uh, 29, 30 years, I'd just laugh at you. Yeah. No, but that's, uh, that unfortunately, that's what's happened. But we're getting back there now. And uh, no, we're, we're really looking forward to it. And you know, I think, um, no, it's a good time. That again, I was meant to say that again, 
comes through the manager. When you meet the Jurgen Klopp, he goes, he goes and gives you a big hug, right? So the first thing you want to do then is go and give someone else a big hug. You know, mm. it, it's it all yeah. Yeah. it's all positive energy, and I think he's got that out of his players this year. That's why they're doing so well and all that. You know, and you know, it's, um, I'm really, really excited about this Liverpool team. You know, um, to win to win the league uh, it would be absolutely amazing. You no, know, that would be. I'm a supporter now. So I'd go there and I, I would give anything. Uh, if you ask me to win the, the Champions League or the Premier League, for me, I'd say the Premier League. Yeah. Because 2005, you know, Liverpool always have this history of they can produce something out of nothing. And that's because of the, the supporters that they have. And if obviously when Leicester won it as well, I was over the moon. I, that was something nobody expected, but they came and did that. So that was a dream come true for them as well. Oh, yeah. And I think that was a good time. I think the other teams were in transition then, weren't yeah. they? You know, but Leicester took full advantage of it. I'd be very, very surprised if that happened again. But I think it's good for football. Yeah. You know, when you see Manchester City, they're winning it all the time and all that. But for Leicester to do that, uh, it was absolutely magnificent. And it's great to see Liverpool giving Manchester City uh, a run for the money this year. Right. We've all enjoyed the limelight and the fans everybody when you're up but like what he talked about as well if somebody picks you up when you're down that gives you a lion's heart doesn't it uh, of course it does um, and I think that is what we're meant to be as human beings but obviously we don't if this is what happens is this it's like if, if, if you're working for someone like if if you had a kid now and he was your next one neighbor but you taught him how to play football somewhat you become vicarious so you want to live through that yeah. kid this is just human nature mm. but in human nature is this is like when sometimes when people are down we don't we feel embarrassed that they're embarrassed that they're down and we don't approach the fact we should be approaching those people we should be giving that that helping hand but sometimes we believe that we can't so we have to realize on this part here is that certain things are charitable Simple things like giving a smile to someone in the morning is mm. charity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just a little, hi, how you doing? Or, or phoning up somebody who's, <coughs> you know what I mean? You, you, I know you got a mobile phone, you got a nice flash phone, I know you got <laughs> yeah. a nice flash phone yeah. in your top pocket right now. Yeah. You go through your phone right now, you go check, I bet you got about 500 numbers in there. Yeah. Right? Out of those 500 numbers, how many of those people do you actually pick up the phone to say, hey, how you doing? I want to know how you doing. Yeah. We should do this as human beings. It's quite simple. It's about I mean? connecting, isn't it's it? It's about connecting and yeah. spreading love. Right, absolutely. And uh, what about you? If you see your career now, uh, back going back in times as well, yeah. who do you see that one person who's really helped you, or was it a bunch of people who lifted you when you were down? Say the missus, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think for I'm me, I'm trying to help you. Uh, here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid and all that, it was 100% my dad. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad, they always he pushed me to you know to do well and everything. When I was at Chester, there was a fella called Cliff Sear. You know, he he knew how to man manage me. I was very shy and everything there, and he knew um, how to man manage. Then I went to Liverpool, and it would be Bob Paisley then. When I always look at Liverpool, Liverpool there, it was called the boot room. They had, they had four people there. No, the, the, um, Bob Paisley was manager, Joe Fagan, Ronnie Moran, Roy Evans. First of all, no one wants each other's job, but they all work together as a team. And by working together as a team, they got the best out of players. And it comes down to, um, actually, it's a mentality. You know, it all comes down to that, you know, and uh, for me, they would be, uh, Bob Paisley, especially Bob Paisley, he'd be the one to say uh, he looked after me. Because when I went, when I first went to Liverpool, I remember getting changed next to Ray Clements, Alan Anson, Kenny Dalglish was in there, but I'd only seen these guys on TV, you know, and I, I was scared to say anything. So I think that what they'd done then is man management. Bob Paisley would get me in his office and, and talk to me and all that, where other people like Teddy McDermott, right, they, were the, they were the mouthpieces there, you know. But Bob Paisley would give them exactly the same back in front of everyone. So they knew, it, they knew how to man manage, but they worked as a team, and that's, uh, that's, what, that's what made me. Now, you've been ringside for many people as well, haven't you? When you were there as well, boxing yourself, that would give you tremendous support when somebody was ringside <coughs> just telling you, like, you can do it, Spencer. Yeah, and, and it's not it's just for me, it's like, uh, it's, it's for all... When you go out and you support, uh, and you get that support, you just look, um, uh, Amir Khan right now, mm. he's got a big fight with Terence Crawford coming Crawford, up on yeah. the weekend, and it's, it's a big fight. But when you know you've got the support of your people, the whole of Pakistan should be behind Amir Khan. You know what I mean? This bottom line, I'm telling you this now, they should mm. be behind him uh, because he's not frightened to fight anyone. He's going <coughs> in with potentially the best pound for pound fighter in the whole wide world, mm -hmm. right? And he could have turned around and got easy pay deals <coughs> elsewhere. He's gone, he's, he's, he's stepped up to the challenge. So, you know, they always say if you don't step forward, you're always be in the same place. He has stepped forward 
he should be commended and the, the the crowd or and the people of Pakistan should be behind him they should be sending well wishes on Twitter and Instagram and everything else and get behind this man because uh, even though he's born in the UK but you know what I mean he's, he's, he's Pakistani got roots back here. Uh, Pakistani descent mm -hmm. they should get behind the man because he will feel that energy I'm telling mm -hmm. you this now energy is infectious right and uh, let's you know before we wrap this up and let's talk about uh, what the plan is right now in Pakistan as well and where's this gonna go to now well <coughs> I think I can't really give you the answer until I've actually you know, been Done there. Yeah, yeah, because it's my first time in Pakistan. Yeah. First impressions are fantastic. The people are really, really nice and all that. But my job is uh, to look at the level. No, I need to look at the level of, um, of the footballers and all that and uh, then put something in place for it uh, to, to do that. Uh, you can't ask someone to do something uh, which they can't do. So I think it's all about getting the, the grassroots uh, there first. And if we can do that, uh, that'll be the start of it. But you, you don't want to get in and get out. Mm -hmm. You've got to get in and leave a lasting legacy. Go on. You want to see improvements. Uh, I remember I went to India five years ago, and all they do was playing cricket and everything. And, uh, and uh, I went there last year. There's pockets now playing football. Yeah. And that's where you see the improvement. Now they watch they watch the, they watch the football on TV. Mm -hmm. And again, they, they they see heroes there. So they want to go out now and pretend that, that they're the person. Obviously, cricket will always be number one and everything. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, if they, if you can get like football, if you get like you no know, legends maybe coming out and all that, but just actually just see them first of all. But and pretending that they're them. But for for me, it's a. Uh, it's for the, the, the boys and girls to, to learn something and uh, hopefully in maybe you know, three, four, five years' time you can do that and you'll see exactly the same in Pakistan. But you always have that one speciality you want to go to. For you it was the FA Cup, wasn't it? The FA Cup was always something you wanted to go to. Yeah, that was, well, I think to, uh, today it'd be the Champions League final. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because obviously it was the, the FA Cup there and uh, no, it was my dream. I remember watching the FA Cup final but uh, watching the, the person who scored every year, then I'd go out my backyard pretending I was that person uh, that scored that goal, you know, and I'd won, I played for Liverpool, I'd won the, the Champions League, I'd won the league, I'd won the League Cup, I'd won everything but the FA Cup. But 1986, uh, my dream came true, where we won the double, it was against Everton, the local rivals, you know, to be 1-0 down half time, you know, to, to win 3-1 and score two goals, you know, my dream came true. Uh, that day, my dream came true, and uh, that's why I say to everyone: No, have that dream, believe in, in your dream, work hard at that dream, and the dreams can come true. And mine did in 1986. Right, absolutely. And talk us through the hashtags now. If people want to get in touch with the foundations as well. What do you see? Uh, what do you tell them? What, what is what it the, for? What Ian Rush is yeah. it's Ian underscore Rush nine. Is it? That was more yeah. than me. <laughs> was it? That's what it is, right? Yeah. And yeah. That, yeah. That, that, what a memory! Yeah. What a memory! Yeah. That's why they call well, it knowledge. Memory. Yeah, the right. knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, and mine on Instagram yeah. is master underscore knowledge. Yeah. Uh, you can also, um, if you just Google Oxford Creative Hub, um, we're doing some fantastic things down there, and also MT, uh, MTK Global who manage so many great fighters uh, and they've uh, put me in position to run this foundation, which I've been doing for a year now and it's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I'm so, so grateful to, to be on your show. Right. And I mean, and all my love to everybody in Pakistan. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. And what about you saying Pakistan Zindabad before we wrap up? Can you Pardon say me? Pakistan Zindabad, it means long live Pakistan. Pakistan Zindabad. Zindaba. Yeah, right. okay. what about you, Ian? Pakistan, yeah. Zindaba. Zindaba, uh, right. Guys, thank you so much. It's been a real honor. I can frankly say it now, Sir Ian and Sir Spencer. <laughs> it's been a real honor to be with you guys, to hear all of these fantastic stories. And I truly hope that you're going to get more love from Pakistan and you're going to take yeah. this forward and back as well. And then bring back not just yourselves as well, but the missus and the kids as well at one point as well. So, <laughs> so we can see. Yeah, yeah. What's the matter with this guy? Yeah, yeah. I still like you. Yeah. So, but that's been it for kickoff. I have been truly honored to get these guys on the show. I, I hope the entire viewers of this show and PTV Sports in Pakistan watching here and around the world have got real-time experience of, of course, the knowledge and of course, the ghost and the killer as well. We're going to leave it at that. From me and the entire team, it's goodbye for now.